Good morning and welcome to church. Thank you for choosing to spend your Sunday morning with us. If you're able to, please stand to your feet and let's get joined together in worship. We sing this morning.
I wish I could tell you I wish I could describe it But I can contain it Gonna keep it to myself There aren't enough colors To make the whole picture And not enough words to ever say what I feel Oh, wonderful and beautiful We declare the glory, give him all the honor, all together worthy, who we talking about, that's my king, oh, there's no one before you, oh, yes we will adore you, oh, all of this is for you, who we talking about, that's my king. In the rock star without joining the chorus There aren't enough notes to make the harmony It's the song of the angels we will sing through the ages It's all of earth and heaven symphony Oh, he's wonderful and beautiful the Lord with gladness, come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. Lord, we pray that that is our heart posture today that we would know that we are the sheep of your pasture, that you tend to us, you are our shepherd. We pray that we would today be filled with joy and to worship you with joy and thanksgiving. Let that be our heart posture today. In Jesus' name, amen. Or amen, South Africa. <laughs> Welcome to church. I am Sharice and I'm on team and it is my joy to welcome you to church today. Before we carry on with the rest of the service, we first want to welcome our guests. So if you are a first-time visitor, if you consider yourself a visitor, 
to Father's House, we have a guest lounge at the back of the auditorium. There we have some of our volunteer team. They can um, answer any questions you might have, um, give you some more information about the church, and you can get a complimentary cup of coffee. No one is mad about that, especially not in this weather. And then during this portion of our service, we celebrate our saints. So those are our grade sixes and sevens and high schoolers. They're going to head off to their own service. So if you could join me in celebrating them as they head off to their service. Don't get tired of celebrating them. They're still passing by some of you. (laughs) Enjoy your service. And then during this portion of the service, we get to have some family moments, some celebrations where we celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So if you are in the building, please would you raise your hand when I say your name, just to help some of our team as they try and find you to give you a small celebration gift. So we have some birthdays, Samantha Pretorius, lots of us know her as Mandy, it was her birthday in the week, um, then Nande Mzandume, Brendan and Kaylin Khos, they're twins, they are 25 today actually, so if you see them, Brendan's actually serving in the parking space right now in this cold, with shorts on by the way. And then um, we have Dominique Krobler, she's here in the front. It's her birthday today as well, if I am correct, yes. We celebrate our birthdays. And then anniversaries, it's Evan and Desiree Duplessis, their anniversary. Gareth and Claudine Benedict celebrated yesterday. And then Sandra and Frank, Yannicka, Sandra's here in the front. Oh, and Frank is here. Happy anniversary. Please, would you greet someone around you, give them a warm hug or a warm high five, whatever suits you best, and welcome them to church before you take your seats. Church news will be on the screen behind me. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello and welcome to Father's House Church. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us and we hope you feel at home. Here's all you need to know about upcoming events, ways to get connected in church life, and so much more. Are you considering making Father's House Church your church home? Well, our Make Yourself at Home dinner is your starting point on your faith journey at Father's House. At this dinner, we'll share our church's vision, what we believe in, and how we are impacting the community. You'll also learn about leadership, small groups, and how you can use your talent to serve. Our staff will be there to answer all your questions and provide all the resources that you need to become a part of our church family and grow in your faith. We'd love to welcome you with open arms, so come on, bring it in. Come on. Oh, and there's no cost involved. Supper is on us. So join us on Tuesdays, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. in Warehouse 1 at Father's House Church in Mandela Bay. RSVP by using the QR code on screen now or email hello at fathershousesa.org so that we can best prepare hosting you. We can't wait to welcome you home at Father's House Church. Calling all parents. Parenthood is not meant to be a journey taken in isolation. It is meant to be a community experience. So whether a seasoned parent or just starting out, we invite you to join us for an evening of connection, support, and spiritual growth. We'll be joined once again by Alan and Tanya Alfeld, and they'll be sharing valuable information and wisdom with us that will teach and enrich your parenting journey. Childcare will be provided, so that's one less thing to worry about. We've got you covered. The next Parent Connect will be taking place on Wednesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. in Warehouse 1 at Father's House Church. No matter where you are in your parenting adventure, you are not alone. Be a part of a supportive community that understands and celebrates the highs and lows of parenthood. Scan the QR code on screen now to RSVP or email hello at fathershousesa.org. We can't wait to welcome you to Parent Connect, where together we navigate the beautiful journey of raising children. Thank you for watching Church News. Enjoy the rest of your service. Okay, good morning, Father's House. Um, Welcome to winter. Did you think you were starting now, Vince? Am I doing something wrong? Okay. 
Um, it really is awesome to be here with you this morning. I am receiving the offering. But before I do that, I have an update or two. Are you okay with that? The good news is that uh, there's more singing to go. And so that can only be good for the soul. Amen. And then uh, preaching. Um, we, those of you who've been part of the story for a little while at Father's House and part of the church will know a little of what I'm going to share. And um, having myself been on a sabbatical to overcome the risk of burnout, I need to compliment the team, especially Mike and Vince, for carrying preaching, worship, <laughs> leadership. And it has led us to the conclusion that I am joyfully not having to do all the preaching and look forward to doing 60% of it as the other team does the rest. But I also wanted to give you an update on churches, a Father's House churches outside of Port Elizabeth, Mandela Bay. For those of you who don't know, there is a church in Karikha, in Jeffreys Bay, in George, lovely town, and, and in Cape Town. And um, we started this initiative of, of planting churches as people moved out of PE just before uh, COVID in 2019 or so, 18. And uh, we had a church planting model. The model was that we would use our heart for the house sowing to set up a church and let them lead the way uh, using the screen uh, for a good amount, like broadcasting PEs preaching into their services. It very quickly became clear that the screen, people would stay at home and watch, you know, with their own cup of coffee. So we said, don't do the, you know, let's not do the screen. And so um, we began a different journey with those churches to help build local leadership, local preaching, local ministry, local kids' church. But I'd made a mistake along the way, and I need to apologize for that. We continued to support those churches and never set it financially and never set a date when that would end. Five years later, that's become something we've needed to address. Are you all still okay? Are you, you sound stressed. If you're visiting, you look stressed. If you're visiting, please come back next week. We will not talk about any of this. It's just like a family moment. So I'm going to update you on how that journey unfolded in November 2022. I did a road trip to all the churches. I announced that we are not church sites with screens. We are local churches with pastors and leadership teams. I encouraged every church to establish a leadership team to be brought fully into the process of how the church is doing in health, in spirituality, and in finance, and to seek the Lord and a strategy on their future, their growth, and their plans. We opened all the financials to all our churches on everything so that their monthly income, monthly expenses were available to that leadership team and to the pastors to be distributed at their discretion. Oh, it sounds so formal. <sighs> um, and then over the last three months, we've really encouraged the churches to land on a strategy of financial viability. I want to tell you that all the churches are doing extraordinary work for the gospel. I am incredibly, and you should be incredibly proud of the gospel represented there. And you have kept five churches running for five years. I, I need to take a moment to honor you for that. But it is also a reality that some needs here can't be met uh, in regards to future programs, staffing, upgrades, equipment, ministry initiatives, outreach programs, while we await uh, sustainability. The goal was actually once churches reach sustainability, they would reinvest the startup into a national account and any future church could be sent from there and no more further capital investment would be needed. And so I have some decisions coming out of that. The Karika Church, Pastor Anthony and, and the team there felt that with him leading a church in Karika and his wife leading the largest in here cat church in PE as the Dumini, that that wasn't going to work. And he stepped down from leading the Karika church to join his wife uh, in ministry together. And the pastors who are running the Karika church, Gary and Elmin um, Wood, 
uh, are doing so as volunteers until there is financial sustainability to employ them. That brings them to break even. So my congratulations to the Karecha Church. With, uh, well done. Um, the city of George is financially viable. So we congratulate them. They actually achieved that in six months, I think. So is that also clappable? Uh, and before you think, yeah, yeah, George, um, they, have the same number, they have the same number of people, same income, but they're renting a venue every Sunday rather than renting one uh, permanently. Uh, the tougher one to share, but I do need to share it, is that the city of Cape Town have come to a decision to um, uh, follow a future that does not include being part of Father's House, and, but with a different benefactor. And we felt okay with that because we didn't want any church in relationship with us for financial reasons. I felt that would be okay. And uh, those who are in Cape Town but feel connected to Father's House will have small groups and online ministry, and we see what the Lord does from there. Amen. Now you're all sad. Jesus is on the throne. It's, it's okay. And then we are finalizing a strategy for uh, Jeffrey's Bay. I wanted to say this to you because I felt perhaps I could have led this better by having from the start a clear off-ramp, and I didn't, and then I lost the courage to set a date and dragged it on longer than was necessary, and I apologize for that. Please forgive me. I also came back from sabbatical just a little earlier because I felt this announcement was unfair to ask Mike or Vince to make. I started this, and I have to face it and I have to resolve it, and so that's what I'm doing today. And that accounts for um, some of the uh, footwork over the last few weeks. I have nothing more drastic or negative to say. I'm actually very encouraged, because I think that what we must do is build this house to have the strength, capacity, and foundation to do many plants in the future, but the way we've been doing it is unsustainable, and we would like to embark on it with a fresh eyes uh, in the future when uh, leadership capacity tells us the time is right. Are you okay with that? Will you please forgive me? And please say yes. I, I won't be able to preach just now. I'll, I'm going to preach on forgiveness today. Production, change the message. Would you please stand to your feet? as we pray and then go into worship. I've also taken a few extra minutes, sorry. Um, you will have heard Mike say that we are reintroducing the actual receiving of the offering through offering baskets on the last Sunday of every month. We've received feedback from some people that that's their personality type. They like to put some money in an envelope or a wallet and come to church and do it at church. And um, we felt not to exclude that personality type. I'm a bit like that, you know, but I do... I put everything that's in the wallet, so I have to put boundaries around my life. But um, we also felt similar with communion, that although it's available every Sunday, uh, people would like to take a moment once in a while and actually take communion together intentionally. These are parts of the patterns of the faith, and we should not minimize them. So on both counts, we're maximizing them in the next season. So the three adjustments, 60% uh, preaching, 40% uh, uh, communion, uh, offering, and uh, apart from all of that, uh, a, a, a move to churches being financially viable so that we can also build what we are doing here uh, in Mandela Bay with intentionality. I thank you for your patience, saints. For those who, who um, tended your offerings uh, and submitted your offerings during the week, I'd like to pray. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege of a favored life, a blessed life. Thank you for the joy of mastering our resources and never being mastered by them. Thank you, Lord, that you're safe hands, you're solid hands, and you're good ground. As we sow by faith, will you please multiply both the work of the Lord and the gifts of of the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, thank you very much, Vince.
we thank you for the way that you made through the cross. And many of us come in here today hoping that you would make a way in our present circumstance, but we just want to take a moment, Jesus, to say thank you for the way that you made through the Father. And that when we lift you up because of that, it seems like all these other things of the earth grow strangely dim. When we just worship you in the beauty of your holiness, that the way you made for us is the way of salvation. It is the gospel we are singing about today. It is the gospel we are singing about today, church. We made a miracle work, promise deep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Jesus, you are the light in the darkness, you are, yes you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness. Feel like we need to make a noise for the gospel. For the cross of Calvary. For the miracle of grace. For the miracle of grace that saved me.
to the other side knowing this was our salvation <laughs> Jesus for our sake you died we sing praise so praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit three in one stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now this gospel blood and Thank you so much for a once-off sacrifice for the eternal redemption of mankind. Lord, today we pray that your Spirit will dwell among us and work within us, but also work through us. We pray that our faith will come alive in new ways. We pray that our eyes, the eyes of our understanding, will open to new things. We pray that a freshness will continue to blow through this church and through our hearts and that we will ever be transformed into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us be Christ-like. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Would you please uh, put your hands together and thank our team for leading us in worship. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, team. I'm aware that some people did a 10K run before they came to church this morning, so thank you very much for being here, and well done. I did not, uh, but I know I don't need that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Why did they ask you? Sorry. Boys, help. Um, but I'm, I appreciate you guys being here, and um, I know it's sort of a weird weekend with, I think, half Iron Man or something, I don't know, something was happening today that moved you yesterday to, to it's what? Absa 10K. And then also, uh, apparently, uh, we, we might have our first snow in South Africa for the winter, 2024. Did you not know that? Apparently, like this Lesotho Mountains and coming down towards here. So anyway, uh, I don't know why that's important. It's my way of easing in after an awkward announcement moment. I decided recently that if I were to get a tattoo, I now know what it will say. It will say, do hard things. 
Because that's what I realized a lot of life's journey is about, is rising to the point of being able to do the hard things that are in front of you. And there's nothing wrong with that. Can you say amen? There's nothing wrong with that. It's part of God's plan for our lives. Well, today I want to start a new series, conversation. Welcome to the online church. Lots of you, more than 150 more connections than normal are online. So maybe you believe the storm we're there and you stayed home and you're watching the service right now with a, a hot chocolate in hand and your tithing envelope in the other hand. And, and I'm joking, that's such a bad joke. I'm so sorry. But to all our online community around the world, and also Kingfisher FM in the Mandela Bay area. Welcome to church. Will you welcome uh, the online church? I spoke last Sunday on the topic of fullness and talked about how Jesus, through the cross, moves us from emptiness to fullness. Today, I want to start a three-week series that will tackle the topic of the soul's wholeness. Our team called it the whole soul. The Greek word is sozo, which has been so abused and so frightening that some of you who've heard it before in church circles are already tapping out and scrolling through Instagram. But I want you to, I want you to know that word is in the Bible and New Testament at least 45 times. And it deals with how the gospel changes us from the inside out. A personal revelation for me over the last few months has been that it has not been difficult for me to die to self or to sacrifice. When it's required of me, I find that quite easy to do. I think that when God gives an instruction, I don't want to disappoint Him, and I am happy to die to self. What I have found harder is to live for Him. Dying can sometimes be the easy part. Stop doing that. Living can sometimes be the difficult part. Start praying. Do you see the distinction? And when you don't do that, then you only have half the gospel, the part of the crucifixion, but you don't have yet in your life the part that matters the most, the resurrection. And we are called not to live dead lives. We are called to live resurrected lives. In fact, it saddened me that I seem to be living my life waiting um, for the wrong thing. I seemed to be living my life with the wrong perspective. I was living in the hopes that things would change in the future instead of recognizing that I can live with the gospel hope that things have already changed and I can start living in that. Romans chapter 8 is our passage of conversation, and I'm reading it. Uh, from the New King James Version. Verse 10, it says, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. This passage of scripture reminds us that although parts of us aren't eternal, that when Christ comes by a spirit in our hearts, a much bigger reality happens, that you are eternal on the inside and everything else is temporary and doesn't matter. Amen? I said to a friend recently, I've realized at my age how important stretching is. Ah, some smiles. You've got to stretch before you gym, before you get out of bed, before you walk, before you... You've got to stretch. Uh, my uncle, who was here, some of you know, had a great time, by the way. Thank you. He's never been hugged and kissed so many times. He contemplated moving to Africa just to be around you. I told him, you're going to sit in the front row. You may accidentally get baptized. He said he's fine with that. He's an atheist. We should try everything we've got. Water, oil, singing, and so whatever we can do and see how it goes. He had a great time. And he, 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 I've got a few weights at home. I'm trying to get back into, you know, some sort of training. And I've got a few weights at home. And he, he w went to one and tried to pick, you know, he just bent over. He's 75. He, he picked it up. looks good for 75. I have hope. And he, he was, he was pick it up. And he's like, oh. I said, don't do that. You've got to stretch before you, grab, you can pick something up with strength. 
And when I told my friend I felt like I'd reached the point where I have to stretch, he said, no, you've reached the point where you can't get away with not stretching. And I thought about how powerful that is from our spiritual lives. There's a point in time where you can get away with not doing. But there will come a time when that stretch has gone on too long. And now the doing is a necessity and not something we can get away with any longer. Can you say amen to that? You've got to do it. And so with that in mind, I'll take you to one more passage of Scripture. And then this incredible story uh, in the Bible that you know well, uh, that demonstrates this principle and then some practical applications. To repeat the idea of the resurrection being our focus and not the crucifixion, though the crucifixion is crucial, it must land on our being resurrected with Christ. It is not the death of life that Christianity brings. It is the birth of new life that Christianity brings. Can you say amen to that? There's an old saying, oh, I hope I get it right. There's an old saying that says, uh, those who are born twice will only die once. Those who are born twice will only die once. Those who are only born once will die twice. If you're wondering what that means, if you're born naturally and you're born again spiritually, the only death you will have is the death of the body. You are born twice but die once. If you are born once in your natural human birth and never born again, then you face two deaths, the death of the body and the death of being separated from Christ for all eternity. Better be born twice in this life and die only once than to be born once in this life and face two deaths in the future. And I want to encourage you to step into that space. For if the uh, bigger part in 1 Corinthians 15, New International. It says this, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Uh, then those also who have fallen asleep, is a lovely way of saying died, in Christ are lost. If only for this life we hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been risen from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen as asleep. For since death, um, a bigger part, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as Adam, uh, for as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. Our gospel story is not about things dying, but about things coming to new life. If you don't push yourself to that resurrection living, here's what that verse means about being pitied. It's saying if you spend your whole life just hoping that when you die, things will get good, then you should be pitied because you could live well in Christ from now, not waiting for a future date. Amen? It's clappable. <laughs> And I want to encourage that in regards to our spiritual journey. This is well represented, the idea of wholeness. And I've titled my message today, I don't think I mentioned it. I titled my message today, How to Be in a Good Space. And I feel like I've spent five months trying to answer that question, how to be in a good space. And I, I want to talk to you about this from the perspective of a particularly powerful story in the Bible. The, powerful, the story of a woman healed from a medical condition she suffered with for um, 12 years. It's in Mark chapter 5. And I'm going to do something I, I really hate it when preachers do. I need a little bit of volume um, on the uh, monitors. Do you think I could get that? It's like so diva. But could I, could I have? I'm so sorry. Could I have someone's down? Thank you. I feel like I'm, I'm um, the, the, the bodies have absorbed the sound. I feel like I'm shouting. Mark chapter 5 uh, says this, a large crowd followed and pressed around him, Jesus, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal um, uh, uh, under the care of many doctors, had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I can touch his clothes, I will be healed. 
Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. And then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. The translation there originally said, has made you whole. The Greek word there is sozo, the completeness of the work of God. Not just physical, but the completeness. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. What an incredible story. But incredible, not so much for the miracle of the healing of the body, but incredible for the conversation Jesus had with the woman. And that's what I want to draw your attention to. Jesus healed lots of people all over the Bible, from various physical things and various demonic things. But in this moment, there was a conversation, and the conversation healed the woman more than just in her body. And I want to tell you that your ongoing conversations with Jesus heals you in places in your life more than just a once-off miracle in one place at some point in time in your life. Can you say amen to that? Imagine the condition of the woman who has already gone through a lot, not just the physical stuff, but the disappointment with the doctors, the financial circumstances, the embarrassment and awkwardness of being that woman in the village, and that circumstance, and that gossip, the suspicion and superstition of people who wonder that there's something wrong with you because you did something wrong, and God is not for you, that you have some sort of curse, and you're judged in some kind of way. She carried all of that weight on her soul, right? The being omitted and ignored, the being given up on, and the disappointment at not being healed or solved, the thing's getting worse rather than getting better. So she gets healed, and in a moment, her body is fixed. But what Jesus does next fixes more than her body. He stops a crowd of people who ignored the woman and said, I, the God of the universe, would like to talk to somebody in this crowd because you are seen. The woman who felt left out with no hope had the king of the universe take a moment to say, I want to hear your story because she told him the whole story. Can I tell you, go to God and give him your whole story. Go to God and give him your whole heart. Go to God and give him your whole weakness and your whole failure and your whole hope. Hide nothing back because he will heal you wholly when you surrender to him wholeheartedly. She could have avoided the moment and snuck away with her one miracle, but instead she went from being a beneficiary of a miracle to a follower and disciple of Jesus in conversation with the king. And all the other things in her life got healed also. That word that I said is in the Bible 44 times, sozo, S-O-Z-O. It's a Greek word. You're welcome. I'm filling you up with language for heaven. No, no, I know, I know. It's going to be Afrikaans. But... There's some clapping for that, you know. I've said Jesus is Lord, no clapping. I've said, I going to talk about in the Himmel, and now, and then. But, but, but here, here's, the, here's the, the, the reality of the word. It has been diminished to mean to save you from hell, salvation, or to heal you from a sickness, healing. But in the 44 times it's mentioned in the New Testament, it means to deliver somebody from every hindrance, restraint, pit, or brokenness, and restore them to their originally intended creative design. You are saved. You are saved. 
It's a mistake to say, I'm saved from hell, and I'm saved for heaven only. You must also say, I am saved from the way I was mistreated by my medical condition. I am saved from the conflict of my identity based on money. I am saved from that. I am healed and restored for it. I was so frustrated with the Lord over those last few months. I said, Lord, why do you put me in this context and do that thing and, and set me up in? I know fathers and mothers who all they want is their children to go into ministry. And I had a context in which they would rather I didn't. And you know what the Lord said? It's what you needed. I put you where you needed to be to do the hard things, to say the whole truth to me, to walk closely with me so that you can be who I created you originally to be. I choose that path. You must choose the pace with which you will walk it. So this woman faced not only a physical healing, first of all, she faced an emotional healing also. She came down trembling onto the ground, number two, emotionally. So it's on production to know where I am. Uh, she came down trembling. Her emotional status was fear, but she walked away from Jesus feeling confident, welcomed, and set free. She had a mental mindset moment. She wondered, if I approach God one more time, is it going to be a disappointment again, only to be met by a deeply gracious Savior, whose sozo action of healing over her life also settled her mind because the community saw her being received by so great a prophet and Lord as Jesus Christ. Not put aside to the back corners of the meeting, but invited to the front row. She also had a social healing or sozo. She was no longer the outcast. I'll bet she was invited to lunch that day by a lot of people. I wonder how her Facebook update status would have looked. Met a man today, oh, you're obvious. Changed my life, huh? I'm a religious girl now. My king is Jesus. My one man is my Lord and Savior. Follow me to Father's house this Sunday. It's all going down there. Gone are the statuses of, please, please pray for me. I'm alone today. Gone are the status of, please follow this link to my GoFundMe account. Instead, am I, is there stuff going on here that I don't know about? Gone is the moaning and the uncertainty and the social disconnection and the pity. And instead, a confidence because a king uttered a word, not just healing, but a complete or whole healing. There are too many Christians who have partial healing. And although they have, we have complete salvation for eternity, we have incomplete spiritual births on earth. She had a psychological moment with the Savior where her transformation was no longer as the unseen, unwanted, and unwelcomed, but now one of the family. It's one of the most powerful things church does, you know. Church creates family, and I don't think you know how big that is until you don't have it. They came to Jesus one day, and they said, your mother and brothers are outside, and Jesus said, I understand that by blood, but you know who my real mothers and brothers are? These people here are my mothers and brothers and my fathers and sisters, these who follow after Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus in our veins is stronger than the blood of DNA from any other source. Can you say amen to that? Even a sense of financial freedom, all this hoping for a future, paying for something, that somebody would come and give her the answer to her problems without charging. How big is that? It's the only reason, just so you know, it's the only reason why I've always struggled with the offering. Now I know how important it is because you've got to honor the visitor, and you've got to honor the follower. The follower needs to bring their offering. A lot of you are going to do it by EFT. Like, don't change that. Uh, uh, you know, if you're not sure, do both. But, oh, sorry, sneaky. But, but I always worry about the visitor, the guest who I want to introduce to Jesus. I never want them to feel like you can receive eternal salvation or anything else from the Lord subject to a small fee. I never want to feel like that because I think that is the church has overdone it. 
overdone it. I can't, I mean, I, I didn't realize how bad it got out there. Just you to, not just in the church. I can't listen to secular radio anymore. It's such nonsense. Just listen to Kingfisher. It's such nonsense. I'll turn, I drove my family to, to, to Cape Town. Uh, uh, listen to some, no, I wasn't going to listen to gospel. I tried and they were freaked out. So, so I did it while they were sleeping. It was like, get in there in Jesus' name. Get in there. But I'm listening, you know, to 5 FM, and it's like five seconds of sexual innuendo. Then I switch over, and it's like um, to Mklobo Wenene, and it's an interview about multiple partners. And then I switch over to, you know, uh, I don't know, Heart FM. I got two or three 80 songs that I thought were really good, and then it was like, oh, we had a part. I couldn't even remember the part. I was so drunk. I was like, change, change, change. Can we just put worship on? Can Vince just make an album and I can put it on there? So I can't deal with this nonsense. It's nonsense. And then you turn on some, some Christians. I'm a pastor. I, I'm going to tell you I'm a pastor, so I'm not ashamed of that. But like some guys, when they do the offering, it's not, it's not honest. There is no connection in the Bible between giving an offering and God performing something for you. You know, that, there is no connection. You, you know, that, that's an... You know, that's a vending machine. We must go to a vending machine. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to finish the sermon. And Vincent Mark are already wondering why they invited me back here. So it's <laughs> Three spiritual practices for living to die, not dying to live. I want to share with you three ideas on how to begin the journey, because we're going to take three weeks on this, and I'm doing a, a message tonight titled, How to Be a Good Soul. So I'm sticking with the theme. I'll do morning and evening for three weeks, and then uh, next two weeks, uh, the men will, will step up, and then the week after that, it's Mother's Day, and we're going to have a plan for that. Um, but I want to talk to you about, um, about how to begin the journey of making sure um, you're in a good space, and by that I mean that salvation goes deeper than just plucking you out of hell and putting you in heaven. That it also means a resurrected life here on earth. Amen. So number one, you need a workout for the soul. You need a workout for the soul. Um, how do I say this? I do spiritual workouts quite often, daily. What that means to me is, I listen to the Bible audio. I listen to a guy whose voice just like, for me, it gets the gospel into my heart. Let me just think of his name now, maybe David Sachet. Is that him? He used to play Poirot, a detective or the other, but he's born again and he's reading the Bible into record. And I just, I, I get on my treadmill, I got one at home, thanks Ario. I get on my treadmill and I turn the audio on, and I just, I, I'm on there for an hour, not fast. <laughs> I've got a little routine. I do five minutes on the treadmill, five minutes of preacher curls, five minutes of uh, uh, triceps, five, five minutes of, uh, not five minutes, 25 push-ups, and, and then as many sit-ups as I can do, three. And then I go back, <laughs> I go back on the treadmill, and then I repeat every five minutes for an hour, and I just listen. That's a spiritual routine. It's also a bit of a physical workout, right? So you do spiritual workout, come to church, spiritual workout. And physical exercise, even the walk here from the parking lot, it's something, you know? It's something. What is your, what is your emotional workout? Because I think there's a disconnect there that we are investing information into the spirit, and we have different levels of physical workout, but there is a connection between those two things called the soul. And the soul holds the information from the spirit and the manifestation in the body, and it needs a workout. For example, you may have to phone someone and forgive them. You know in the spirit that forgiveness is right. And you do that workout every time you read that in Scripture. But the soul needs a workout. You'll have to do it. I didn't expect any amens here. I'm just, I'm just going to push through. 
You, 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 the soul needs a stretch. It is manning up up here and saying, hey, I'm sorry. I think we should have handled this a while ago. That doesn't fall into the stretching of the spirit. And it's, you know, some physical, I needed to drink water and I felt a little shaky. I've been doing this a long time. But something in the middle is my soul, which is your feelings, your aspirations, your identity, your ego. Something has to happen there that stretches it and gives it a workout. Can you say amen? I, uh, my, my, I'm confident that my uncles are not listening to this message. So I can tell you a funny story at their expense. I have lived alone for 25 years or more. It was hard to have other people at my house for four days. Now some of you are like, ha ha, you don't know, you need kids. I felt I had two. <laughs> Let me tell you why. My one uncle, the, the uncle, it's his friend, who's a psychologist, by the way, so I thought either he needed to travel with a psychologist or they decided I needed a visit. <laughs> from a psycho- I couldn't work it out. Anyway, I felt he needed to travel. But <clears throat> he's, he, th- there's no rhythm to his conversations. So what I mean, he's a professor eh? of... of um, Primary healthcare infrastructures and systems for the EU. And um, he'll say, George, uh, let's peel potatoes. We're going to make this impala meat. Sure, start peeling. While I'm peeling, do you have nail clippers? I mean, I do, but where are we going with this? No, no, he's quickly going to cut his nails. Now, while we're peeling, but yeah, he feels he'd like to, like to cut his nails. So I get the nail clipper, I wash my hands, I go back to peeling potatoes. <coughs> Outside, you know, as uh, uh, you know, as he trims his hooves, and then, and then, <clears throat> I'm not even joking. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. And then he was like, George, <coughs> yes, unks, <coughs> find your mother there. Like, I'm peeling the the impala wants to run away. You are cutting your nails there where I sit for daily devotion. Even now, I'm finding, you know, I must find my mother, the water's boiling for the potatoes. I'm just frazzled. And I was between 8 and 8.15. This whole thing happened. I eventually said to him, I'm not going to do that. He said, why? I said, because you must finish cutting your nails. I must finish peeling these potatoes, and this impala needs to get in the oven. Can we have some kind of order here in our lives? I said, Okay. Uh, when they left and I did my devotion with the Lord, I said to him, Lord, I needed that, didn't I? He said, yep. I'm going to send you more. <laughs> Stuff doesn't happen on your time. doesn't happen your way. It doesn't always stick to your program. Welcome to the exercise stretching of the soul. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> Ah, Lord, therefore get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can sozo you. Secondly, the soul needs a workstation. You know, online church, um, I really love you very much and I'm amazed how many people are part of this church online. I bump into people in town and they're like, we haven't been to the building, but we're part of the church. So I respect that. Totally, totally, I get it. Different reasons, stages of life. I would love for you to find a way of implementing what I'm going to share now. <clears throat> but everyone has a gift or gifts and your soul needs you to use them because you will grow the muscle mass of your soul in a way you can't do any other way. I've always been mystified by this passage of Scripture. I'll bet you most people know part B, but not part A. It says this, 2 Timothy 1, verse 6, Therefore, 
I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And this is the part everyone knows. For, connected to the previous verse, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I always quoted verse 7 on its own. God has not given us a spirit of fear and power and of a sound mind. I am not afraid of, insert idea. But that verse says, you must do something with your gift and don't be afraid because God will give you the power and the clarity of thought on how to do it when you stir it up. Do, do you see they connected? They're not random. We, we, you know, we, they're not, you know the, the Bible is not like a buffet where you, you sort of pick the sweet stuff you like. It's, it's, a, what's a, like a, it's a set course. You're going to get every meal. And one of those meals is God has given me um, the power uh, and the love and the soundness of mind to get through my insecurities and my fears and anxieties so that, verse 6, our production, can I be that pastor? Can you just put verse 6 up again? Because like, we haven't seen it like a lot. We've seen 7. To stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. That's what the next verse is for. Amen? So like, yeah, don't be afraid of the dark. It applies. But what it really means more deeply is that it applies to the application of a gift. Your soul needs a workout. Your soul needs a workstation. Can you say amen to that? I mean, Pastor Mike was in the parking lot today. Can we have five people serving in parking next week or ten people serving in, you know, production? Your soul needs it. And you're going to say to me, oh, George, you know, some of the saints aren't very nice. They stretch me a bit. They don't park where we tell them. <laughs> Let me tell you, the person in the car needs it, and the person giving direction needs it, and the two are sharpening one another, and both of you are getting your soul stretched, and one of you is going to survive, or... <laughs> Can you say amen to that? Your, your soul needs a workout. Your soul needs a workstation. Number three, production. We're almost there. Your soul needs a walk now and then. <laughs> I um, will wrap up with this. I've had two dogs, uh, and in December had to put the one down. Oh, did you, I, I didn't want to post about it while I was on sabbatical. It's like, oh, another thing. But um, the little brown and white one, Guni, had had cancer for some time and on, on the skin, and it had become untenable, leaking and smelling and sticking to furniture. I had a feeling that the time was coming, so I had a day of taking photos and spoiling and whatever, and then went to the vet and said, can we do something about it? And I knew in my heart he was, what he was going to say. And he said, George, this dog is suffering and should not go home today. And I said, well, he's going to another home. My vet's Christian. And he said, yes, George, that's not what I mean. You know, Christians, we've got to spiritualize something to get out of the awkwardness of the conversation. And so we put Nguni down that day. So now I have one. And um, she seems fine now. It took a few months. She was very angry with me for not bringing back her buddy. Very oh, annoying. Anyway, after the nail clippers and the potatoes and the impala, I dug deep in storage and found a leash. And I thought, before I say something I shouldn't, go for a walk. And I walked the other one for the first time ever. You don't walk pit bulls, they walk you. <laughs> and when you're my size, you just look like a man in the wind. <laughs> like, eh. There goes some guy with unstable on his legs being carted through the suburbs of the, the city. And everyone parts ways. Come say hello now, I'm fine. Right there, chief. Right there, boss. Whew. But what I, I mean <clears throat> is that your soul needs company. Your spirit is you and Jesus, and it would be better if you forgot who was around you when you're stretching your spirit. Well, your body <laughs> needs food. But your soul needs company. 
if anyone among you is in trouble, let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person sozo. The Lord will raise them up, and if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Just a pause. I know that verse makes people anxious. Because people think, I used to think, that what you must confess is like personal moral sins. It's unfortunate. There's a bit of a translation. It's a, it's a big word, confess, and sins. So it's hard to uh, interpret it. But I don't know if you know what the next verse says. I should have put it up there. You know what the next verse says? For Elijah was such a man, and when he prayed, it stopped raining. And then when he prayed again, the rains came. It's not personal moral failure that you're supposed to be confessing to one another. It's the wrestling of things in your soul. It's to sit with somebody and say, I'm just fighting with trusting God on something at the moment. Can I take, can I, is it okay if we talk about it for a bit? And the correct response is, thank you for sharing that with me. Is it okay if we pray about it for a bit? Now, let me tell you, if you don't pray about it, you will gossip about it. I have found that people who gossip don't pray, and people who pray don't gossip. And this relationship is really important, and I was so embarrassed about it myself because I thought, I don't need anybody. I got the Lord and my pit bulls. But it needed somebody to hear and to say, hey, that's going too far. Hey, let's pray about it. I told Mel's dad, Chris Britt, I said, gosh, I, I've reached this point where I feel ashamed that I can't lead well. And I, I feel like I'm inflicting people with my company. And he took offense at that. He said, you, that is not a phrase that a Christian can say. In fact, we're not continuing this conversation until we pray. And what happens is you start, there's no such thing as your truth. There's the truth and your misinterpretation of the truth. No human being can interpret truth accurately. We need the King of Kings, who is the way, the life, and the truth, to tell us what truth is. And sometimes the avenue of that is through other people. The soul needs a walk with a friend, to unburden some things so that you can come into wholeness and stop living in secrecy or carrying a burden alone. For does not the Bible say, carry one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ? How then shall I carry your burden unless I know that you are burdened and that vulnerability brings healing? Can you say amen to that? Would you please stand with me? Thank you. Let's, let's stand and pray together. I, I, I wonder if our online community can stay online for this part too. We are remarkably at, at almost 500 people watching online. I wondered if you would stay online, because I'd like to pray with you wherever you are right now, that you will uh, agree with the Lord to a journey of spiritual and personal wholeness. And it does, it does not mean a whole, a whole soul. It does not mean there's something wrong with me. It just means I am giving my soul a workout. I'm building muscle mass. I'm finding a, a, a workstation for my soul. And I'm finding companionship that will be good for the soul. Because those three things will get me in a good space. And the devil will try to rob you of those three things. He'll try to rob you of those three things. Make you it too awkward for you to do what your soul needs you to do. Make it confrontational for you to get involved in some way. Or make you isolated so you don't think anybody cares about you. And that'll get you in a bad space. This is not impossible. With God's help, even hard things are possible. Can you say amen? Would you close your eyes for a moment? If you're not in a good space, I'd love to pray with you. 
And whether, if you're online, um, maybe just send an emoji on, on the chat and indicate it. Just put a hand up or whatever. Just say me. Uh, type me if, if you'd rather. Um, but if you're in the room and you're not in a good space and today you feel like you've got a formula from Scripture on how to do that, could you raise your hand and say, I am stepping into that today. I need to get into a good space with the Lord and I need to get into a good space with my journey. Pray for me. Would you please raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of you, and it's, I don't want to, it's not embarrassing. I don't want to embarrass you in any way. Uh, and I know that you might be with a partner or a, your kids, and you, it's an awkward thing to step into, but just take a, a step of faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so let's, let's invite the Lord to lead the way. You don't need to pray it out loud, but perhaps in reflection in your heart, would you repeat this idea in your thoughts and in your heart? Lord Jesus, please lead me. Take me past just the miracle of eternal salvation, the miracle of being set free from my sins and being born again. Would you take me from born again to adulthood, to maturity, that my soul will stretch, my soul will build muscle mass, my soul, spirit, and body will work in unison, and that I'll become, become Christ-like as I follow after. Help me perceive everything in my life in a new light that it is intended to tutor me and raise me up. For we are not just dead in Christ. We are also raised with Christ to new life here, now, today, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, would you give God a shout of praise and thanksgiving and I, I appreciate your spending the extra time on this weekend. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for uh, putting your hands up here and online. Have a great Sunday. I see some of you tonight. Stay for coffee and come forward for prayer if you would like. God bless you, everybody.